Yes. Um, I wanted to talk briefly a little bit about your uh, absolute pitch. Uh, yeah. People who are not familiar with that term, uh, it refers to the fact that some people, we don't exactly know why or how, but some people can automatically, without really working very hard, identify the exact pitch of any note that they hear, and in fact of any sound that they hear. It sometimes gets very creepy for people who who can always hear the pitch of everything. When, when did you find out that you had absolute pitch? Oh, I was about seven years old. It was a teacher, wasn't it? Uh, Somebody? It was one of the kids at school had a balloon, <laughs> and he had it in a certain key, and I told him it. And he says, ah, oh, that's a lie. You can't tell that. So we went to the teacher and had uh, had it tested. And that's when the teacher discovered, too, that I have had absolute pitch. Now, an absolute pitch hasn't hurt me any. I'm not fussy about, uh, you know, instruments being perfect. Uh, I like them to be, like them to be tuned up perfect, but I mean, as far as hitting a note, uh, you know, different notes and tune, I'm not that fussy. But as a matter of fact, you don't like to be really tuned up too high. It is your practice, no. isn't it, to tune down a little bit, isn't it? Right. I tune down to what's called European tuning. The A, is, for instance, is uh, 435 instead of 440. It saves on strings. <laughs> it sounds just as good, you know. And, uh, you know. and as Kenny notoriously says, if you save on strings, you let you buy more hamburgers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the result is that you often break strings because you haven't changed them regularly. Right, I do that but, too. But tuning down uh, low is, is something that an awful lot of musicians do. But, uh, you know, I've, I have known a lot of people with absolute pitch who get very annoyed because nothing is ever quite right. You know, a piano is never tuned exactly right. That's really uh, sad when they, they're that way. And, it's and as, right. as you say, I think it's just because they're, they're just complainers. They're and, fussy. <laughs> and people who are too fussy. Yeah. But, but you also can hear pitch uh, of anything. For example, crickets. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, the cricket now, and uh, in the kind of weather that I like, very warm. And at night, when the crickets first start to say it's been 100 degrees that day, and by night it might be down 98, something when the, you know, when the crickets start chirping, about uh, 8.30 or close to 4 to 9. Now, I'm thinking of daylight saving time now. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually hit a piano high C. I mean, the highest C you can hit on a piano. And that's the pitch that they're chirping. Right. Until, and as the, and as the night gets a little cooler, they come on down to about four notes. It amounts to when, they're, when it's about, uh, say, oh, 72, 73 in the morning, uh, about four o'clock in the morning, when the, just before they quit chirping, that's about a lower G sharp, about uh, four notes lower. And then it, there are seasonal changes, too, that you hear. You can, you can check the crickets out all through the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's like in October, uh, and especially some of the cool nights on the coast. Well, even even in the Sierras too, when it gets rather chilly, uh, they're very uncomfortable. They're a whole let's see, a whole octave and a half low, and their wings or whatever they're rubbing, they just barely rub. They're very uncomfortable in that cold weather. <laughs> And you can hear the pitch, and you can yeah. also hear the pitch in refrigerators, right? Oh yeah, now that now a good refrigerator. Uh, of the older type is uh, it's uh, it's in the key of B if it's working right. <laughs> B major. Yeah, B major. Oh yeah, B major. It has uh, in fact it has the uh, the uh, E flat overtone along with the uh, third <laughs> interval. And uh, in fact, that's the 60 cycle hum that you hear in the substations. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a B. And now, like with a, a freezer. The older ones, like I it was, uh, when it was working right, and when the woman of the house was a poor housekeeper and, and didn't sweep, uh, it would always run right. Uh, it would be up to a C sharp and really get with it. <laughs> but when the woman of the house wanted to be extra clean, 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 and that dust would, uh, she'd sweep up all the time and get that dust in the condenser, it would go clear down to an A, a sick A, and it would have to go 20 minutes at a time instead of 12. That's pretty heavy on your electric bill. It can wear out the motor, you know. Oh, things. right. So if you had absolute pitch, you could save a lot of your household appliances, huh? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what do you look, uh, I once tried to figure out what the telephone buzz was in case I ever needed to tune my instrument. 
Uh, but they keep changing them now. Do you know what they yeah, are Yeah, they do. Oh, I forget. That was... I, I could tell right away if I heard one, but I, I forget. I just never paid that much attention to it. <laughs> Somebody tells a good story that in the United States, you call up the telephone company and you ask for the time. Yeah. In Vienna, you call up and you ask for an A. And the operator gives you a concert pitch A. Is so, that right? Oh, yeah. I so your home string quartet can go. Speaking of string quartets, maybe we ought to move over to a fiddle tune now. Oh, all right. Uh, okay. And prettiest girl in the country. Is that a skillet liquor? That's a tune? skillet liquor tune. That was a group that was also of great interest to you, wasn't it? Yeah. They right. were a, a, a Georgia-based string band. Right. In the twenties and and. Uh, yeah, Georgia humor, and uh, it was. It was in the 20s when the Roaring Twenties were going on, and that most of their songs were about liquor because most of the people uh, didn't like the uh, prohibition. And so, uh, and uh, Victor, just let them go ahead and do it. Because they I did guess, all these great moonshine yeah, tunes. Yeah, huh? oh yeah. So, but this ain't a moonshine tune though, but it's uh, It's a good tune. I'll, yeah. I'll accompany you on the banjo with this one. All right, great. Fiddle, isn't it? Yeah, that that's right. Have. And this tune come from one that uh, wasn't from the band. The whole band didn't make this tune. It was just Riley and Gid Tenor. And Gid had a particular uh, way he played this tune. It was different than the rest of the band played. 